Hello, everybody. It's Tanya with a very special guest with me tonight. Um, we have Santa Claus here tonight. We just wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, although the holidays might look a little bit different this year, we wanted to let you know that the magic of Christmas is still here. Santa Claus misses you all, and we're sad that we weren't able to host our Santa meet and greet in person this year, um, but Santa Claus sure was excited to still see you. And even though we can't partner with our friends at Beyond Boundaries, and you're not able to see Santa in person and take pictures like we're used to, we wanted to let you know that we still have him as a special guest tonight with us at Family Voices, and that he's ready to read you a couple magical stories about Christmas. All right, Santa, take it away. Ho, 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 ho. Hi, boys and girls. I'm happy to be here with you this evening. And uh, I really enjoy reading stories to you, and I enjoy seeing you. This year is a little bit different, so we're going to just read the Nutcracker this evening, and we will see you when you're sleeping on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. The Nutcracker. Here's the Nutcracker. The first page. It was Christmas Eve and the snow was gently falling. Clara and her brother Fritz were very excited. That night there would be a magnificent party with music and dancing as well as lots of fantastic presents. Fritz was busy with his toy soldiers lining them up and giving them orders. Clara put the finishing touches to their enormous tree. She hung shining ornaments and candy canes tied with bows from the branches. This is my favorite part, Clara said to her brother as she lifted up a beautiful fairy with delicate wings and sugar plum colored dress. And there's Fritz and his soldiers. And there's Clara and she has the sugar plum fairy next to the tree. At last, it was time for the party to begin. The guests are arriving, cried Clara, peeping out of her bedroom window. Fritz came running over to see who was crunching through the snow. Can you see Godfather Drosselmeyer? asked Clara. Yes, there he is waving, cried Fritz. Come on. Their godfather was a famous toy maker. He made the most magical toys in the whole city. Clara and Fritz could hardly wait to see what he had brought for them. There's Godfather Drosselmeyer and the kids. Kids peeking through the windows and all of the town. And there's people caroling in the background. Godfather Drosselmeyer hugged the children at the door, and with a flourish, he produced two gifts. Fritz eagerly unwrapped a mechanical jawbreaker machine. For Clara, there was a wooden nutcracker in the shape of a soldier. Take good care of him, said Grandfather Drosselmeyer. He is very special. I love him, Clara whispered. Thank you. But he's a soldier, said Fritz. He should be mine. You can't have him, cried Clara. Fritz tried to snatch the nutcracker away from her. He pulled and Clara tugged and then crack. The nutcracker's leg snapped off. And there's some pictures of Fritz and Clara and Godfather Drosselmeyer. And here they're fighting over the nutcracker and his leg broke off right there. Clara cradled the nutcracker in her arms and wept. Don't cry, Clara, said her godfather gently. This soldier has been wounded, but I can soon fix him. Godfather Drosselmeyer pulled a little too old pouch from his pocket and quickly mended the nutcracker so that he looked as good as new. Oh, thank you, said Clara, drying her eyes. I'll never let anyone hurt him again. Everyone was dancing now, and the house was filled with music and laughter. Clara placed the nutcracker carefully under the Christmas tree and went to join the party. 
Here, Godfather Drosselmeyer is fixing the nutcracker. And in this other picture, everybody's at the party. Finally, the last dance was danced and the guests said their goodbyes. The family went to bed and the house was dark and quiet. Bong! Clara awoke to hear the last bong of the clock striking midnight. Oh no, she thought, I left the nutcracker all alone under the tree. Clara tiptoed downstairs and crept under the Christmas tree, holding the nutcracker protectively. Suddenly, the tree started to grow taller and taller. Or was it that just that Clara was shrinking? What happened, she cried. Here, Clara is under the tree getting the uh, nutcracker. And over in this other picture, the tree was growing taller. Or was Clara shrinking? Don't be afraid, said a kind voice suddenly. Clara turned around. Her nutcracker had come alive. Behind him, Fritz's soldiers were sitting up in their toy box, and Clara's dolls were gazing around. Before Clara could speak, she heard a scurrying sound, and from every nook and cranny, an army of mice poured into the room. They were led by a giant mouse king with a golden crown. Attack, he squealed. Who will fight with me, said, cried the nutcracker. The soldiers marched boldly out of the toy box. So there's the nutcracker and there's the soldiers climbing out of the toy box. To battle, ordered the nutcracker. The soldiers shouted and cheered and the mice squealed and squeaked. Suddenly, Clara saw the Mouse King spring toward her beloved nutcracker, baring his teeth. No, cried Clara. She snatched off her slipper and hurled it at the Mouse King. He fell to the ground with a cry and his crown tumbled from his head. With their leader defeated, the mice scurried away in fear. The battle was won. And here they're fighting with the mice. And here the Mouse King has fallen to the floor. The nutcracker picked up Clara's slipper and placed it on her foot. She gasped. The nutcracker had been transformed into a handsome prince. I owe you my life, Princess Clara, he said. You broke the spell that was put on me long ago by a wicked mouse queen. I'm glad that you're safe, said Clara. But you are mistaken. I'm not a princess. Are you sure, asked the prince. Clara looked down and saw that she was wearing a glittering gown and satin shoes. Come, said the prince, I am going to take you on a wonderful adventure. And there's the prince that was previously the nutcracker. And there's Clara, who's become a princess. The walls of the living room seemed to fade away and a beautiful sleigh drew up in front of them, led by two reindeer. Clara and the prince climbed aboard and they were swept high into the sky among the sparkling stars. Suddenly, Clara caught sight of a magical land down below. Lollipop trees shimmered on cotton candy hills. There were gingerbread houses and rivers of honey and orange scented breeze. Where are we, gasped Clara. This is the kingdom of sweets, said the prince. Here, Clara and the prince were riding the sleigh with two reindeer. And over here is the kingdom of sweets, where people get candy. Oh, who likes candy? I sure do. Can you tell by my tummy? I eat too much candy. The sleigh landed beside a rose-colored lake and changed into a steed chariot pulled by dolphins. Swans swam beside them and shimmering fish leapt out of the water. On the far side of the lake was a magnificent marzipan palace. A fairy with delicate wings was waving to them from the gate. Look, said the prince, it's the sugar plum fairy. 
Prince Nutcracker, cried the fairy, you are home at last. This is Princess Clara, said the prince as they stepped ashore. He saved my life and broke, she saved my life and broke the mouse queen's spell. Sugar Plum Fairy hugged Clara. Come and join the celebrations, she said. And here the, uh, the reindeer changed into the dolphins and the sleigh changed into the, what did we call that? It was a sea chariot. And then there's some swans next to that. Over here's the sugar plum fairy. Inside the palace, Clara and the prince feasted on delicious cakes and sweets. They watched in wonder as dancers from every corner of the world twirled around them. Then it was the sugar plum fairy's turn. Clara had never seen such dancing. She twirled and twirled until all Clara could see was the blur of her plum colored dress. Clara's eyelids began to droop. Her adventures made her tired. The sound of the music became fainter and fainter. Here's all the dancers from all around the world. And here the sugar plum fairy was dancing a very special dance for the prince and the princess. When Clara woke up on Christmas morning, she found herself curled up under the Christmas tree next to the nutcracker. Toys were strewn across the floor and her parents were standing over her. What have you been doing, asked her father. Oh, I've had the most wonderful adventure, said Clara. She told her parents all about the Mouse King, the Nutcracker Prince, and the Kingdom of Sweets. It was just a dream, darling, her mother, Clara, said her mother. Clara gazed up at the sugar plum colored fairy on top of the tree. Then she looked at the wooden, excuse me, oh, I'm sorry. Then she looked at the wooden nutcracker in her hands. Perhaps it was, she said. Suddenly, Clara noticed something glinting on the carpet and a smile spread across her face. It was a tiny golden crown. And there's her parents and Fritz getting up in the morning. And here's Clara under the tree. And what's that? Is that a little golden crown? My goodness, I guess the story was true. Merry Christmas, Prince Nutcracker, she whispered. The end. And you can see all of the wonderful toys under the tree and the nicely decorated tree. And there's Clara with her Nutcracker. And that's the end of the story. Oh, Santa. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for coming on and reading that lovely story to all the children at Family Voices of North Dakota. We're so glad you were able to join us on this virtual night. I know you're missing your elf friends and all your little children friends this year, but I'm happy you were able to make it this year to join us. So thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule. Yes, it has been a difficult year. Usually I shave my beard and I sneak out in public and get to visit with lots of people and see what kinds of things are going on in the world. But this year has been tough for all of us. And we just need to remember to wear our masks and keep your social distancing, but also be able to show everyone how much you love them. That's right, Santa. Thank you again for reminding us that the magic of Christmas is still here. Well, thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Well, all of us at Family Voices and Santa Claus want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Thank you all. Merry Christmas, everyone. Good night. <laughs>